Okay. So we have joining us virtually, we have Todd Harden and Murphy Webster. And in the room, we have Scott Potter and we have David Dumas and Cookie Peden on the committee. So we do have a quorum. We are missing Commissioner Hawk, who has a conflict this morning. So that's our attendance. Robin, thank you. So since we do have a quorum, the meeting of the ANSAC committee is hereby called to order at 11.03 a.m. Good morning. Jason, you want to take off and lead us through? Good morning. We have two CAs for the ADSEC committee this morning. Uh, the signs are both identical, um, located on different elevations. I'm going to start with case number one, or excuse me, two, one, 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 zero, one, zero, 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 two. It's an application for a certificate of appropriateness by Kenneth Waits of City Sign Services, Inc. for a 13.13 square foot LED illuminated attached sign. The site is 2330 Flora Street, Suite 150. This sign is on the northwest elevation. It's located within the Arts District Sign District within PD 145. It does meet all applicable code. Here's an aerial map. Again, like I said, it's on the northwest elevation facing Flora and the zoning map. Here is the applicant supplied location map. Again, they flipped the map. Um, I circled with a red circle where this sign is located and you can also see there's another sign on the other elevation that we'll look at next. Here are the sign details. Let me see if I got the elevation. All right, here's the sign details. Um, it is a flat attached private sign. It's composed of a two inch deep set of reverse channel letters reading Stella. Uh, the channel letters are painted black with white LED halo lighting. They are stud mounted one and one half to two inches off of a white aluminum contoured backer panel. And that panel is mounted flush to the wall. Both the primary and secondary electrical are located behind the wall within an enclosure. Um, the sign also has some non-illuminated flat attached letters reading La Cucina, and I know I'm going to mess this up, uh, Grace. Um, the projection on this sign uh, will not exceed four inches. Again, this is one of two signs proposed by the applicant. Both are identical. Um, this one faces Flora. The other one, which is case number 211101010003, is located on the northeast facade, and there are no other signs for this tenant. Um, just some quick highlights of the Arts District sign code. Sorry about that. My mouse is really sensitive. Um, these signs are required to be in the Flora Street frontage. The PD defines the Flora Street frontage as uh, the area at each building site within 50 feet of the projected 100 foot wide Flora Street right of way. Um, it does require that all sign hardware, mounting devices, and electrical be concealed or integrated into the sign. Um, all the materials uh, must be corrosion resistant and any paints and coatings should have a UV inhibitor that's been uh, recommended by the manufacturer. Um, again, this is an attached private sign. It says that no establishment can have a mix of awning projecting attached or flat attached signs or marquee signs. Um, these are both flat attached signs, so it does meet that requirement. Um, a couple of requirements on the flat attached signs is none are located above a third story. Uh, no sign may exceed 70% of the length of the frontage or 60 square feet. And signs on the same establishment must be at least 30 feet apart. Um, the maximum character heights 
uh, for a sign below the third story are 18 inches. Sign cabinets are prohibited. Um, adequate clear space for characters must be provided. And they go on to define that saying that uh, a character height can exceed 60% of the vertical dimension of the sign. All the sides of three dimensional characters must be the same color as the faces. Uh, no sign may contain more than five words and internally lit plastic translucent signs are prohibited. Um, this sign does meet all applicable code. Um, here are some of the photos from the site. The sign is going to go here above this door. And here's a little bit closer view showing where that sign's located. Here are some of the other signs within the area. Um, there weren't a lot of signs in this area currently. Uh, there's the artisan, which the secondary sign for this location is gonna go right on this wall, but it is uh, basically the same type of construction, um, reverse channel letters and a reverse logo, everything halo lights on that sign. There's the Morton Meyer, uh, Meyerson Symphony Hall or center across the floor on the other side, it's some non-illuminated flat attached letters. Uh, the Flora Lofts, which actually went through on our last ADSAC meeting. Uh, those are some reverse channel letters on a back plate on top of a canopy. Here's the uh, museum. Um, it is same type of construction, only the back plate is, is square on this one. And you can see it projects off the wall a little bit there. And staff recommends approval. Okay. Um, since these are similar, did you guys want to take both of them and have Jason go ahead and step through? Or do you want to talk about each sign individually? What's the consensus of the committee? Scott, what's your... I'm fine either way. I mean, the signs are identical. I'm hearing that there's no issue. It's really just a placement. Um, I do have um, just a couple of questions. Just. Okay, do you want to ask them now? We can go ahead and do that, Scott. Um, so on uh, the case number ending in 02, um, I noticed that was in a different location than the previous restaurant sign because the door is actually being relocated uh, to that space. You said it was above a doorway. Um, I think when you showed it on the, the slide. Can we go back? It might be right there on the lower right-hand corner. Yes, here. So they're, they're actually moving the door, uh, which, which probably makes sense why they would move the sign. So just wanted to confirm that. And then the, uh, the lighting, I know it was noted as white LED, but it's a non-changing color. Correct, okay. it's, it's just a consistent okay. light, like it won't flash or change color. Perfect, that covers my questions. And, okay. and it's a halo light you said that just Correct. glows behind. Okay. I did have one quick observation, Jason, would you please check the mounting elevation, because I think it was on this, one of the two signs that I saw that it might not be reflected correctly. One place that said northeast or northwest, and I just want to be sure that before it goes to CPC, that we don't have a roadblock at CPC because somebody raises hand and says, that's not the right elevation. Just double check me because right. I was reading these late last night. No, it is, it is wrong here. Okay. Um, that's what the applicant supplied, so I left it as is. Okay. But I was for sure to then we state need that clarification it is. after we talk about the other sign, and we'll get clarification of exactly the location because we don't want them to go to CPC and right. have somebody object and kick it back. No, this is the northwest elevation. You can see they turned it, which makes it difficult to establish those. Yeah, and of course, directions. if we the presentation and the briefing at CPC, then then that'll be fine, assuming we move forward. But, but yes, this, this is the northwest, the next one will be the northeast. Okay, thank you. And there's that page. For some reason, my mouse is really sensitive and I skipped that page. I'm sorry, but yes, it's just... Yeah, yeah that shows the, the other the panels over the restaurant. Yeah, that was the one you were talking about, yes. Scott. So, Jason, this property is in subdistrict 1, or subdistrict A, rather. Does that make any difference for the Florida Street signs? So district A is that we define the restrictions and other things, I believe. 
Well, well since um, since it's not any of those signs that are mentioned <laughs> that are exempt. Um, a building identification sign, a cultural identification sign, a canopy sign, a tenant identity sign. Um, it, it's just an attached private sign. Okay, so it, it those, falls. It, those, it, those regulations don't apply. Okay, so it falls back to the regular arts district code. Correct. 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 Unless okay. it's a called out sign type, which this is not. Um, it, it doesn't apply. And I know this is. There, there's gotten to be a lot of overlays in this district, so it gets quite complex. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. Hey, just curiosity. Okay. This, why, why is this considered a private sign versus a tenant sign? Kind of That's a good question. I don't remember seeing private signs before. Do you just come up? I don't. Let me pull that code real quick. I don't know if it's because the because it's retail use and the the tenant signs are limited to yeah. the main office tenants. I don't know. Right. Maybe so. Just I, even when we review sub districts for the other areas, I don't remember ever having a discussion about private signs. Sorry, so I just my memory is sleeping. Good question, guys. I think these have to be on loss or something from memory. I've got something I'm prepping for January, so I'm more than curious. Oh, okay. You're using us for your research work, huh, Murphy? Well, I, I, I tell you what, it's a confusing uh, dictatorial that I've mm -hmm. never figured out in all these years. So um, I hear you. I, yeah, I always thought the private sign was the major anchor building sign. So, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you read this. Private signs, those signs are not public as defined in the section. Public or governmental projects, institutional government control, generic retail identification, promotional signs, or plaques. Do they define tenant signs? They do. It's not in this particular report, yes. Scott, but I know we did have that discussion when we were looking at some other signage in the area. So tenant, tenant identity sign means an attached premise sign in subdistrict A or B located on the building that is primarily used for offices used to identify specific office tenant. So the tenant sign would be for All the right. office building. Yes. If, if you look at the tenant identity signs under subdistrict A, um, except as provided in this paragraph, tenant identity signs must be located above the highest leasable floor on the Ross Avenue facade. A tenant identity sign uh, on the Ross Avenue side, a tenant identity sign may be located on, a, on any floor. Um, so because it's not above the highest level and it's not on Ross, it's not a tenant identity sign. Does that make sense? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, yes, and no. It's it's a very difficult district. I think that that sub district came into effect to put in uh, the Jackson Walker sign, I think. Yes. Yes, yeah, it was Jackson. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, it, it, and there's it, it, another it, sign on top of that building. So Suzanne. I think it's that in effect for, for them. Yeah, that's sub-district A came into effect for the KPMG sign and the Jackson Walker that's sign. It. Yeah. Yes, yes, you are correct. KPMG, that was the one I couldn't think of. But yes, because it's on uh, on the floor street side, and it's not on the highest story. That, that That's why. That's Jason, can I stop for just a second? Because we need to know that Tamara Wooten has joined us virtually. Okay. So, I uh, didn't catch that at first. I'm sorry, Tamara. I was on earlier, but not as a participant. Sorry about that. I've been, I've been. Oh, here. okay. Well, thank you for the clarification. Yes, sir. All right. If there's no other questions, I'm going to go on to the next case.
Jason, this is Donna. I needed to jump in for a moment. Um, all uh, members of uh, the committee must have their cameras on. You need to turn your camera. Yeah. Thank you. Tamara, can you turn your camera on? Sorry about that. Thanks, Donna. Yeah. Otherwise, she's not considered registered in participating. There we go. Thank you. We missed your smiling face. Okay. All right, the next item is item number 211101000, and that should be a three. I'll correct that. It is correct in the reports, but I missed it on here. Uh, an application for a certificate of appropriateness by Kenneth Waits of City Sign Services, Inc., for a 1.13 square foot LED illuminated attached sign. The subject site is 2330 Flora Street, Suite 150. It is on the northeast elevation. Uh, it is in the Arts District, PD 145, and it does meet all applicable code. This is an aerial map. Uh, the star did not move a lot, but you can see it kind of moved to that northeast elevation. And the zoning map. Here is the applicant supplied location map, and I've circled which, which sign it is. And here's an elevation view of where that sign is going to be located. Here's uh, the sign detail. Again, it's identical to the other. Um, only the Stella letters are going to illuminate. And here's the construction detail. Here's a corner shot showing where that sign's going to be located. And then another corner shot there. And again, same, same signs as before. And staff recommended approval. Do we have any questions from our virtual attendees? Any from those of us in the room? Sorry. I don't have any more questions, no. No, I think we've had our questions answered. Okay. And before we go, the only thing that I thought was an action item is to be certain that we have that elevation mounting location correctly identified so that we don't have any hang-ups or further delays. So do we have a motion if there are no other questions? Uh, is it agreeable to everybody that we vote on both of these together? Yeah. Okay. It is. Can I have a motion to that effect, David? Uh, a motion that we uh, uh, take both cases together. And okay. Vote on is there a second? Um, Second. Oh, second. second Scott. Well, Scott seconded. Yeah. He beat you to the punch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that we can include all of our virtual members, we'll just do a roll call vote. Uh, Todd, your vote on the motion to consider both together? Acceptable. Aye. Okay. Murphy? Uh, aye. Tamara? Vote to approve. Scott? Approved. David? In favor. And the chair approves. Okay. So now that we have decided to take both together, could we have a motion on these signs? Oh, come on, you shy people. Could we have a motion, please? I'll motion to approve okay. with the corrections in the directional. Okay. Motion from Todd to approve with the correction for the elevation location of the signage. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Tamara seconds. And we will do our roll call vote again. Todd, your vote, please, sir. Uh, aye. Approved. Okay. Murphy? Aye. Aye. R. Aye, aye, R. Go our pirates with us today. Okay. Tamara? Approved. Approved. Scott? Approved. David? Approved. And the chair approves. So we have a unanimous uh, vote on that. And then... On this, we had some corrections to minutes. Did everybody receive the revised minutes? Okay. The main revision was that we had, uh, the minutes were incomplete when Jason inherited them. And so they went back and looked at the tapes and corrected the minutes. And I think the major change, Jason, was in the attendees that were there. And, and the and cases. The votes. 
Yeah, the votes on the tapes. It's because I think we had listed Scott as being in attendance, but we did not record him as, as having voted. So Scott, was the vote listed here, the way you voted on those? Um, I believe so. I mean, it's I, only been about I, eight I, months or six or eight I months. I made a, a motion, so I could only assume that, that my you vote is correct. correct. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Any other things that you saw in the minutes that needed to be corrected? Okay, I'm getting head shakes, meaning no, from the virtual attendees. No changes? No changes. Group. Okay, then could we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? <clears throat> Murphy, come on, give a motion, please. You've been too quiet today. I wasn't, th I wasn't there. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, fair. that's right, you weren't. I'll I make a motion to approve the minutes as okay. amended. Motion from Scott, second by David. All in, well, all in favor. Virtual vote again. Todd? In favor. In favor, Tamara? In favor. Murphy? Yeah, I'm out. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Scott obviously made the motion, so he approves. Yes, approves. <laughs> David approves and the chair approves. Thank you, guys. And that concludes our business. So since we have no further business. We have the. the oh, wait a minute. Schedule. Yeah, the calendar. I'm yes. so sorry. So I went out of order. Robin, can I share the content? Yeah, yeah, SSDAC had approved. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you the you same same Sorry, thank you. Are you the ones that did the sign design and everything? Yeah. Could you get with Jason Order. and give him the correct elevation? Because I don't want to see you go to CPC and then have them hold it up with a question about well, which is the elevation that's correct. Should so we have that, please get that clarification. That'll that'll save you one more delay in getting your sign. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay. Can everybody see the agenda if you didn't get a chance to print it out? I'm sorry, the calendar, not the agenda. Would you look over this and see? And again, as Jason always says, if we do not have any sign applications, then obviously we will not meet. And he'll let us know and keep us surprised at that. We do currently have two SSDACs for the next meeting in January. But that's SSDAC, not AA. None yet for ATSA. <coughs> Sorry, I need to go refill my water bottle. I'm losing my voice. Hey, Jason, okay. are, we gonna, are we gonna continue to do, um, if we don't have a, uh, an uh, arts district, we'll do it at nine. And if we do, we'll do 10, 11. So well, it depends on the number of cases as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the way this is structured, the arts district is always at 11. There's asterisks next to this. SDAC where we can move it if we need to. Since there was only one case for SDAC, okay. I bumped so it up. So if we had a big load, we could take right. time. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. And if you prefer a meeting at 10, we can we can try to make that work just depending on the caseload. And I can. I, I just need them together. So right. yeah. the right. idea so of having an hour of space. Yep. Yeah. That was what we were trying to avoid for sure. Murphy, you had something? Yeah, just a heads up. I, I'm I'm going to bring two to the table on uh, SSDAC uh, through Marie uh, for the January. So you'll have. Uh, so you will need to recuse yourself. Is that what you're saying? Well, I will have to. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Just a heads up. Do we need a motion to adjourn? I don't know if we. Yeah, as soon as we vote on the calendar. Okay, sorry. So we need to vote on that. Okay, did anybody else have any questions about the calendar? If not, do we have a motion to approve this or to accept this calendar for the coming year? Motion to approve this calendar. Okay. okay, I don't know who said it first, either Todd or Tamara. So, Todd, you're the first, and Tamara, can you be the second on the motion? Second. Okay, and can we just do a show wave of hands and I'll record them for Jason? Okay, everybody on the virtual team says they approve. Everybody here is approved, so we have a unanimous decision. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Happy holidays, guys. Bye. Happy holidays. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Happy holidays. <laughs>